Hey guys, it's Callie and welcome back to my channel and today we're talking about being puppy cat. Almost 10 years after its initial release, the beloved series Being Puppycat is finally coming to Netflix and fans couldn't be happier. But if you're familiar with the show, you know that it's been a long and hard journey getting here, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're in the right place. So if you're completely unfamiliar with the show, Being Puppycat is an animated series about the adventures of Bee, a woman in her 20s who struggles to hold a job, and Puppycat, a part dog, part cat, part vocaloid creature. <laughs> The show premiered in 2013 and was created by Natasha Allegri, who previously worked on Adventure Time and created the character designs for Fiona and Cake. The show has been praised for its relatable characters, stunning visuals, and overall cozy vibes, being described as both, quote, Miyazaki for TV and Magical Girls for Millennials. And personally, this is one of my favorite shows. I had a Bean Puppy Cat sticker on my laptop in college. I've cosplayed as Bee in the past. I have plans to get a Bean Puppy Cat tattoo. And I even have a Puppy Cat plush that talks. <laughs> and my deep love for the show is something that is shared throughout the fandom, as this truly is such a beautiful series that has resonated with so many people. But you may be wondering, if this show is so popular and widely loved, why isn't there more of it? And why is it only now being broadcast to a larger audience almost a decade after its premiere? Basically, what went wrong? And this question is something that fans themselves have been wondering because despite all the support and hype around the show for the past nine years, there always seems to be some issue. So as a longtime fan of the show, I wanted to take a closer look at the history of the series and see if I could pinpoint why the show has struggled for so long or at the very least see where things could have gone better. So strap in, get ready, and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and let's go all the way back to the year 2013. Now, unlike other popular animated shows that get their start on streaming services or major networks, Bee and Puppycat got its start right here on YouTube on a channel called Cartoon Hangover. Cartoon Hangover is an internet, TV, and adult animation channel created by Frederator Studios, an animation studio run by Channel Frederator Network. Now, Channel Frederator Network is a multi-channel network for animation, video games, and pop culture. It was founded in 2014, and to this day hosts large animation YouTubers such as Jaden Animations and Domix. The company was founded by former president of Hanna-Barbera Studios, Fred Seibert, who was involved in launching many classic animated series on Cartoon Network, such as Courage the Cowardly Dog, Dexter's Laboratory, and The Powerpuff Girls. The company is the largest distributor of independent animation online, and its in-house animation studio, Frederator Studios, has worked on big projects such as Adventure Time on Cartoon Network, Castlevania on Netflix, and various popular Nickelodeon series. The company began to explore made-for-web animations in 2012 when it launched Cartoon Hangover, which was also part of the YouTube Original Channel Initiative, a $100 million program funded by Google to bring more original content to the platform. The channel got its start posting various animated shorts and series and really began to take off after the premiere of one of its most popular shows, Braves Warriors. In 2013, the pilot for Bee and Puppy Cat premiered with part 1 airing on July 11th and part 2 on August 6th, along with a video containing the entire pilot together. After it premiered, the show rapidly grew in popularity and views began to skyrocket, and the pilot is still one of Cartoon Hangover's most viewed videos of all time. People were quick to fall in love with Bee, this semi-misfit in her 20s just trying to find her way, and her ambiguous pet who sang instead of spoke. Fun fact, the show was actually released on the Nintendo 3DS eStore, and apparently, it is still available on the platform to this day, so do with that information what you will. <laughs> on October 15th, 2013, just three months after the show's initial premiere, Cartoon Hangover launched a Kickstarter to get more episodes of Bee and Puppy Cat made. The goal of using a Kickstarter was to ensure that Natasha's vision of the show would be what was shown on screen, as bigger studios can take a lot of the creative direction away. The Kickstarter reached its initial goal of $600,000 with only six days left in the campaign, and by the end of it, had raised a total of $872,133, which is insane. That is almost $1 million exclusively from fans, which just shows how much the show meant to them and how badly they wanted to see more episodes get made. 
At the time, it was one of the most successful animated Kickstarters in history, ranking number four in the film and video category and becoming the number one campaign based on a YouTube video. To this day, it is still the most funded campaign based on a YouTube video and remains in the top 15 all-time funded campaigns in film and video. Through the campaign, fans were able to fund 10 six-minute episodes, which were initially slated to be released in summer of 2014. Now, there were a few production delays, but episode one of the new season premiered on Cartoon Hangover on November 6, 2014, with episodes two, three, and four being released throughout the remainder of the year. And while fans loved the new episodes for the most part, they did note significant animation and styling changes were made, such as B's character design being altered and the entire series being a little less defined and generally more rounded. But regardless, fans were just happy to get more of the show they'd love so much. Unfortunately for fans, there were even more production delays, and it ended up being another two years before the second half of season one was completed. And while Kickstarters gained early access to some of the remaining shows in 2015, a lot of the fandom was left in the dark as there was a severe lack of communication from Cartoon Hangover, who up until now had been very transparent about the state of production. In fact, the next public update didn't come until March of 2016, when it was announced that the final episode had finally been completed. And fans rejoiced because while it had been a long two years without content or updates, they were finally going to see the remainder of the episodes they had looked forward to for so long. Or so they thought. Two months later, on July 12, 2016, Cartoon Hangover announced that the remainder of season one of Bean Puppy Cat would not premiere on YouTube as initially promised, and instead would air on a new streaming service called Verve. Now, Verve was a multi-channel streaming service from Malaysian, the owners of Crunchyroll, that marketed itself as, quote, a streaming service for geeks, with content heavily focused on anime, animation, and gaming. At the time of its launch, initial partners included big names like Crunchyroll, Rooster Teeth, Funimation, College Humor, Geek and Sundry, and of course, Cartoon Hangover. In regards to being Puppycat, the remainder of season one would be available on Verve the day the service launched. And fan response to this was mixed, to say the least. While Kickstarters did get full access to all the episodes, people who missed the Kickstarter or couldn't afford it at the time, like myself, were left out to dry as this widely beloved show was suddenly put behind a paywall after years of no communication. And not only that, but at the time, Verve was only available in the United States, meaning that if you didn't live there, you just couldn't watch the show. And yes, you can pay for a VPN to change your location, but that's another thing to pay for on top of a Verve subscription, and suddenly the show was just a lot less accessible than it once was. When this was announced, it was difficult for fans not to view this decision as a giant cash grab as this went against the entire essence of the show. Being Puppycat got its start as this accessible, made-for-YouTube series that allowed Natasha and her team to create something magical that resonated with a lot of people. And the entire point of the Kickstarter was to keep the power in Natasha's hands and avoid any issues that came with being involved with the bigger studio. So it was an interesting move to then suddenly sign on with a big company and put all these fan-funded videos behind a paywall. Now don't get me wrong, I understand that animation is expensive to create. It takes a lot of time and money to hire animators, background artists, vocal actors, and everyone else involved in this complex process. And I understand that Cartoon Hangover may have viewed this as an opportunity to secure stable funding for the series so that Kickstarters would no longer be required for new episodes. But announcing this after two years of radio silence, along with all, not just some, but all of the new episodes behind the paywall was the wrong decision. I'm not saying it was a bad one, I'm not saying it was a good one, I'm just saying it was the wrong choice. Being Puppycat Season 1 was funded by fans for fans. It wasn't funded for half of Season 1 to belong to a big corporation. And honestly, looking back on it, I think this was the big turning point for Being Puppycat, because despite having such a loyal fan base, a lot of the fans couldn't afford to pay for Verve or simply didn't want to because of the way Cartoon Hangover had handled things. And it's unfortunate because the show itself had done nothing wrong, it had just gotten caught up in the wrong business deal. After the Verve announcement, Being Puppycat updates ceased for yet another two years, leaving many fans to wonder if this was the end of the series for good. But on June 11, 2018, everything changed. The second season of Being Puppycat, titled Lazy in Space, was officially announced and despite all the discourse two years ago, fans were just as excited to hear that more of the show was being made. 
The show was slated to be released in 2019 exclusively on Verve and would be produced by Federator Studios with a partnership with OLM Inc., the studio that created the original Pokemon series. A few months later, it was also announced that the full second half of season one would be available on YouTube by the end of the year, finally making these episodes accessible to the entire fan base. And this decision breathed new life into being Puppy Cat because new fans were able to discover the show and older fans like myself were finally able to see what we've been waiting for. In regards to being available exclusively on Fur, the fan response this time was a lot more muted and fans seem to be more receptive to pay for episodes specifically made for Verve, especially after getting access to the fan-funded ones. So the fan base strapped in and got ready for 2019 and started waiting and waiting and waiting and suddenly it was March of 2020 and there had been no updates in almost two years again. Now the episode Little Fingers did air at the Ottawa International Film Festival in September of 2019, but it wasn't until April of 2020 that fans finally got an update after the YouTube channel Cartoon Universe took it upon themselves to physically call Frederator Studios. On the call, Frederator Studios admitted that the production of Blazing Space had finished and that they were in the process of looking for a new streaming service to release it on. And this was big news for two reasons. One, because it meant the episodes were done and ready to go, but two, it meant the series would no longer be released on Verve. Now, whether this was because Verve was underperforming and Cartoon Hangover was looking to jump ship, or because Frederator Studios lost their deal due to missed deadlines, we'll never know. But what fans did know was that the new episodes were within their grasp and began to hypothesize where being Puppy Cat's new home could be, with Netflix, Hulu, and HBO Max being popular guesses. And once again, new life was breathed into being Puppy Cat, and fans were buzzing at the idea of new content. That was until the leak. In June 2020, the entirety of Lazy in Space was leaked on Fred Seibert's Vimeo channel. The actual date it leaked is a little fuzzy as the show may have initially leaked back in May, but overall it was not a good look. The episodes were removed from Vimeo shortly afterwards, but not before they had been uploaded to countless other websites. And long-term fans of the series were heartbroken to hear this because while it was difficult to fully blame fans for watching something they've waited literal years for, this leak was putting the entire show into jeopardy. Because as more and more people viewed these pirated episodes, the chances that a streaming service would pick up the series became lower and lower. And after all the production delays, fans were worried this was the final nail in the coffin and that the second season would never officially see the light of day. However, as luck would have it, a few months later in October, Netflix announced that they were the new home of the beloved series. And just like clockwork, fans rejoiced and there was no news until two years later on August 12th of 2022, where it was announced that the season would officially premiere later that year on September 6th on Netflix. It had been nine years since the pilot, four years since the announcement of Lazy in Space, and fans were just as loyal and feral for new content as ever. It was finally over. B and Puppy Cat had found their home on Netflix, the mecca of streaming animation. Fans could finally relax, and the future of the series was finally looking bright for once. That is, until Netflix axed their entire animation department, canceling several projects, and once again throwing the show into uncertain limbo. So now that we've covered Bee and Puppycat's long and tumultuous journey, it's time to answer the overarching question, what went wrong? Why did a show with such an active and loyal fan base struggle so much to get seen? And I believe Bee and Puppycat's issues can be summarized in three points, the first being lack of communication. From the get-go, Bee and Puppycat has struggled with deadlines and production delays, and fans didn't entirely mind that as long as they got semi-regular updates on the status of the show. And for the first half of season one, Carson Hangover did just that. They provided monthly updates, behind the scenes footage, and sneak peeks, which helped reassure fans that more of the show was coming. However, after those episodes dropped, Cartoon Hangover began to keep fans completely in the dark, with updates only coming every two years. And I understand that animation takes time to produce, and you have to consider any storyboard or editing changes that need to be made, but to go from constant communication to radio silence was not the right move. If monthly updates were too much to provide, they could have just communicated that and maybe gave us updates every six months or even yearly, you know, just something besides every two years. But I feel even the lack of communication could have been forgiven if not for their decision to partner with Verve. I honestly think Verve was one of the worst decisions made in regards to being Puppy Cat because these episodes were funded by fans for fans, presumably to be released on YouTube for free. 
And again, I understand that animation is expensive and this may have been an opportunity to secure stable funding, but this sudden decision led a lot of fans to lose faith and respect for the company behind the series. And it's frustrating to look back on this because if just a few things went differently, we could have ended up with an entirely different outcome. If Cartoon Hangover had communicated this earlier to fans or somehow prepped them for this decision, perhaps the backlash wouldn't have been as severe. You know, maybe if they posted half of the episodes to YouTube and only kept the final episodes on Verve, people would have been more inclined to pay for the service to see how the story resolves. But regardless of what could have been, the decision that was made severely stunted the show's momentum and isolated a lot of the fandom. And that brings me to my last point, which is just, the show has bad luck. It felt like every time the show was on the verge of taking off again, something would happen and the show would be back at square one. From production delays, to struggling to find a home for the series, to the entire season leaking, Bee and Puppy Cat just couldn't catch a break. And the future of the show is still uncertain, as Netflix got rid of its entire animation department earlier this year, cancelling many of their future series, some of which were already well into production. And I fully believed that Lazy in Space would never see the light of day after hearing this announcement, so I was overwhelmingly delighted to hear that the show would still be released. But if I'm being honest, I think this is the final run for the show. And I'm so sad because while I would love to see even more of the series, I think being Puppycat has missed their window, especially as many modern streaming services don't seem to value animation like they once claimed. It's hard not to wonder if things could have gone differently, you know? What would have happened if Bee and Puppy Cat got its start somewhere besides Cartoon Hangover? Would things have been different if the show got a start on Netflix or another streaming service? And would that have provided us with more stability and more episodes? Maybe the show wouldn't even have existed if it didn't get its start at Freddy Raider Studios, and maybe this is just how things were meant to be. Regardless of what the future holds, Bee and Puppy Cat is a treasure of a show. It's such a unique and heartwarming story that has struck a chord with me and countless others throughout the world. If you haven't watched the series, I highly encourage watching it both on YouTube and on Netflix when it comes out because it is really something very, very special and September 6th just can't come soon enough. But yeah, that'll do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please be sure to like and subscribe if you aren't already and let me know what you think. Do you have your own theories regarding being Puppy Cat or do you have any specific thoughts on the Netflix show? I know I'm curious to see how many episodes they had to reanimate. I think they had to redo the animation because of some licensing issues. And I think Netflix also cut production of the show pretty early because the new animations just don't have the same vibe as the original one. So I'm curious to see how it all turns out because again, I'm just happy to finally be able to see these episodes. And despite my cynicism, I genuinely hope that being Puppy Cat has found its forever home on Netflix and that I'm wrong and that this is just the start for the series because it, it just has so much to offer. But yeah, as always, thank you guys so much for watching my videos. It really does mean the world to me and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Who wants to make a million babies with me? Who wants to make a million babies with me?